Trump blamed China for North Korea. Then he changed his mind. Then he changed it again. On Friday, North Korea tested a missile that could theoretically hit New York and Washington, D.C., the first time it has ever tested a missile with that kind of range. On Saturday night, President Trump tweeted something of a response to this very serious threat blame China. There is a certain kind of logic here. China is North Korea's largest trading partner by far, so Beijing really does have economic leverage over Pyongyang. If China were to put more pressure on North Korea, this could as the president says help get North Korea to the negotiating table. But experts say that, contra Trump, China can t solve the North Korea nuclear crisis on its own. North Korea is not just going to give up its nuclear program because Beijing says so. Sure, China has some economic leverage, but its political influence has limits. Jenny Town, the assistant director of the U.S. Korea Institute at Johns Hopkins University, tells me via email. Believing China has some secret power over North Korea is just wishful thinking. Trump's new tweets also flagrantly contradict his line from just one month ago when he thanked China for its efforts with North Korea. What this all shows, most fundamentally, is that Trump's North Korea policy makes no sense. It keeps changing in a way that reflects the president's own mercurial nature and lack of detailed policy knowledge. It is the precise opposite of the kind of careful diplomacy you do need to enlist China as help against North Korea. Trump's concept that China could easily solve this problem shows a fundamental lack of understanding of this challenge, explains Laura Rosenberger, the former National Security Council director for Korea and China. Vague demands and nonspecific threats are not going to move the Chinese. Trump has no coherent approach to North Korea. Trump had taken aggressive stances on China for years prior to taking office particularly on the issue of trade. During the campaign he claimed China was ripping us left and right and suggested, somewhat strangely, that he'd take him to McDonald's and go back to the negotiating table. This skepticism about China colored the early months of Trump's presidency, particularly when it came to North Korea. In March, for example, he slammed China on Twitter for failing to assist, much like he did this weekend, in an interview with the Financial Times published on April 3rd. Trump demanded that China fix North Korea or else face the threat of some unspecified, but by implication military, U.S. action. If China is not going to solve North Korea, we will. That is all I am telling you, he said. China will either decide to help us with North Korea, or they won't. And if they do that will be very good for China, and if they don't it won't be good for anyone. Then Trump welcomed Chinese President 11 Jinping to his estate at Mar-a-Lago on April 6 and everything changed. By the president's own account, as told to the Wall Street Journal, the two men briefly chatted about the history of Chinese-Korean relations. The conversation rocked Trump's world. After listening for 10 minutes, I realized it is not so easy, the president told the journal. I felt pretty strongly that they had a tremendous power over North Korea. But it is not what you would think. Town called Trump's approach to North Korea naive in our correspondence. And this is a perfect example of what she is talking about. The president claims to have come to a profound realization about one of the most 